There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. Melissa Service Pack 7 is now controlling transmission. Uh-oh. I just want to say that I still have my old laptop. I'm going to keep my old laptop. Oh my god, my legs look really funny in this, in the screen. <laughs> because right now, I'm using it as a, <laughs> a DVD player so I can watch 16 Candles on the TV, which I got at Persevering Stars yard sale. As I mentioned in a previous video. Okay, bye. I'm gonna watch 16 Candles now. Okay, so I'm working on a mask. I just got this fabric. This is a fat quarter from Walmart. You get <clears throat> this is a dollar fifty, and you can make about five masks out of this one piece of paper, depending on the size of your face. For me, I could get five. Okay, so um, what was I gonna say? Anyway. And then I'm using for the lining, I have a shirt that just I didn't like, it didn't fit me right. So this is what I'm going to use for the lining on the inside of the mask. And it's just the right colors, it goes nicely with it. And so what I do is I take, I took apart a regular paper mask and then I unfolded it. I added an inch on each side and an inch to the top and the bottom just to allow for the seams. And then you just use this pattern to, to cut it out from the fabric. And then um, I'm going to show you the rest of the process as I go through. Okay, so this is the ins going to be the inside of the mask. This is the fat corner unfolded, and as you can see, this is one mask. So you can easily do two, three, uh, four, five, probably, maybe six, I don't know, it depends. But anyway, there we go. Okay, now, one more thing to remember, when you're making your mask, you gotta look at, if you have a fabric that has a print on it, like this, make sure that the print is right side up so that when you make the mask, it doesn't look like it's upside down when it's on your face. Also, when you're sewing the two layers together, you're gonna put the layer, I'm sorry, okay, so this layer, you're gonna put the side that you want to show and the side that you wanna show on the inside. Put them back to back because we're going to sew these together, okay? So you've got to remember. Okay, now I have sewed all of this. I sewed all the way around <laughs> the two pieces, except I left this piece open because this, you got to leave about that much open. Maybe I should have left a little more. But, anyways, this is where we're going to turn the fabric right side out. So, let me just position the camera so you can watch that process take place. Do it carefully so you don't rip the stitches out. Okay. I'm just going to turn it right side out like this and it's going to make a nice square. And you won't see any of the seams. I sewed this by hand, by the way, because I don't have a sewing machine. But it doesn't matter because, like I said, you're not going to see the seams. You're only going to see, like, one tiny seam, okay? So, um, just put that corner out. Okay. So what you have here is it kind of looks like a, almost like a pillowcase that you saw. It's going to be the lining, and then this is going to be the front, okay? So the next thing you have to do is sew up this little section that we left out. And just to be more specific, I'm using this thread. This came in um, a sewing kit I got in a 99 cents and up store. I paid like $1.29 for the kit, and this, this is just the perfect color. I'm also using this sewing kit from Dollar Tree, which comes with everything. Like, you get pins, safety pins, um, buttons, needles, and even scissors. These are the needles in here, okay? And, a me and some, oh, there's a measuring tape in there. I didn't even know that. But anyway, 
Um, these are really inexpensive to make yourself, so please do not pay people twenty dollars, fifteen, you know, fifteen. Oh, it's handmade, so you know that's my excuse to charge these really high prices. No, that's bullcrap. You could do this yourself at home for maybe four dollars, five, depending on what materials you use. Okay, so this is the whole mask from. The front view. This is upside down. That way. Um, here it is. Okay, and this is the inside, and that's the seam you're gonna have there. That, but like I said, it's not really gonna show because look, it's just the right shade of pink. That's all you're gonna see, and it's excuse me, it's gonna be on your face. People are not gonna get that close to you to notice it. You know, um, and. Like I said, it's, it's, I don't know what I said, I, I had a brain for it. Anyway, now comes the time when we fold the mask, to, and then it starts to look like a real mask. So I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so now comes the time when we have to put these folds in, and there's one, two, there's three folds. So I have done that, I folded it on one side. Once you get one side, the other side will fall. I stuck my pin in it to keep it the way it has to be and you're just gonna sew along the folds okay on each side and then you're gonna attach these things which I'll show you how to do in a minute. Okay so when you're finished sewing the edges together okay you're gonna be left with something like this so it's gonna look real tiny you're like how is that gonna fit on my face? Okay well I'm doing this one hand of work it will fit, okay, because once you unfold it, see how it goes like that? Okay, now the only thing left to do is sew on the little elastic straps. And what I like to do is just take one of these plain, ugly paper masks. I cut these off and I sew them on. So we're going to sew those on, and then I'm going to show you what the mask looks like on. Okay, so the mask is done. I've sewed on the handles, or whatever you call it, elastic. I gotta clip that string sticking off. There it is from the front, and I'll show you what it looks like on in a little bit. But anyways, that's how it looks, and it's it covers everything it needs to cover, and it fits perfectly. And again, it, the total cost of this was probably um, dollar fifty for the fabric. The sewing kit was another dollar to maybe three fifty, four dollars tops, whatever. Okay. And yeah, so just don't when people try to charge you like twenty bucks for a mask, don't pay it. Make it yourself. And you can do this I did this with a needle and thread and it looks just as good as something that somebody sewed on a machine. It really does. Okay, so the mask is finished. This is what it looks like. Okay, you can see from the side. It covers all the way under my chin. And actually, it could go, you know, longer, depending on the shape of your head. Unfortunately, I have an ugly potato-shaped head. And so I need more coverage than someone else would, but if we take it off, sorry, my hair looks bad, it's wet. When you take it off, it looks really tiny, like this. Whoops, I can't get it to do it with one hand, but that's what it looks like when it's off. And that's how you make a mask from a fat Jello pudding thing. pops, jello pudding pops, frozen pudding on a stick. You know, Jello Pudding Pops is a winner with all the soapbox racers I know. It is? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And even your mechanic's getting all revved up about it because it's so rich and creamy. Yeah! And it always gets the green light from Mom because it's made with real pudding. Mmm! -hmm. Jello brand Pudding Pops. All the goodness of real Jello Pudding. So you know it's wholesome. 
a true winner. And he gets a green light from Mom. Zoom. Okay. YouTube. We're going to try two crazy foods today. We're going to try the apple pie Kit Kat and Trolls Jello Jello layers. This is me. If my personality had color, it would look like this. So we're gonna try both of these. Since these are cold, we're gonna try these first. So we'll be right back. So this is what they look like. Oh, whoops, that's upside down. Okay, has a picture of a troll on it. Let's open it up. Oh, it's like pudding. Okay, so here's the pudding. Beautiful colors. Love that pinkish purple. I'm gonna use my favorite spoon to try this. It's, uh, well, I'm gonna be honest, it's not that great. All right. It's really, really sweet. Like, almost like, <coughs> The unicorn pudding that they had at Walmart that I did not like. All right. Um, let me just dip down into the, like, the blue. Mmm. I think I like the blue. Hold on. Let me get... Okay, it's like blue and this is, oh my god, these colors are so cool. Yeah, the blue's really good, but the purple on top is just way too sweet. I feel like if I were to actually eat all three together, maybe it would taste good. Okay, so there's all three colors on the spoon. I guess it's okay when you eat all three colors, but there's like this weird bitter kind of a tinge in the background. Like, it's sweet, but then there's this this bitterness that hits you after the sweetness, like at, at the end of your tongue. So I, I don't know. I rate it. Uh, I'll give it like a six out of 10 and that's being nice. Sorry, troll pudding, but you're not that good. All right. Next up is the apple pie Kit Kat taste test. All right. Oh, it's white. I know somebody who likes white chocolate. All right. Okay. So there it is. It smells a lot like apple pie, like exactly actually. Let's see if it tastes like apple pie. Um, yeah, it does. It tastes exactly like apple pie. However, I'm not a fan of apple. I, I like apple pie, it's okay. No, they're there. Excuse me, I'm on the other, waiting for a doctor to come on the phone, so they're kind of on hold while I'm doing this. Anyway, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of apple pie. Like, I'll eat it once in a while if it's offered as a dessert or I'm at someone's house, and they're like, do you want a piece of apple pie? Okay, but I don't actively go out to get myself apple pie. All right. So... In terms of rating this as how much it tastes like an apple pie, I definitely give it a 10 out of 10, except it's, I, I don't like apple pie that much, so, um, like, I definitely don't want to finish this because I just want to see what it was like. So, yeah, if you like apple pie, you'll love this, guaranteed, okay? And if you like white chocolate, um, you'll like this. Been on hold for 16 minutes. That's ridiculous. All right. Got some vintage supermarket ads and coupons. 
these were graciously donated by YouTube user Dirty Bob. Thank you, Dirty Bob. This is a manufacturer's coupon that expired on 11-30-1993 for Palmala Plus. Cleans better than ever. Okay. Let's look. These are no double coupons. Let's check for that. Whoa. Palmala Plus. Grease absorbing sun. No double coupon. Okay, here is a free toilet training book locker from Huggies Pull Ups. A book about toilet training. A $9.95 value. Free with three proofs and purchase points plus 49 cents postage and handling. See back for details. Let's see how old this is. 1989, whoa! <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And the offer expired December 31st, 1990. Damn. Okay. And I have this. This is from the grocery store. Advertised specials. Jergens Lotion, 377. Okay, so then we have this ad for Jergens Lotion something. I don't know what these abbreviations are for. Extra dry. Three seventy-seven. I don't know how old these are, but if we were to price Jergens Lotion today, um, we could compare the prices. So I'll do that. Okay, not doing that. Then we got a red tag special on Viadin Oral Rinse Mint for two ninety nine. I've never heard of Viadin. Does Viadin exist anymore? We will Google and we will find out. Okay, and then we have this Isles of Smiles for Jerry's Kids. Buy this product, help Jerry's Kids. Now is that a D? Zoom in and see that, if that has a date on it or not. Judging by the hairstyle of that girl, it's probably, you know, I'm going to say I'm the newest.